as a young man, when it comes down to style, you want to be out there experimenting, making mistakes and learning to formulate your own opinion when it comes to your own personal image. In today's video, gents, 21 style tips for men in their twenties. First up on the list, go out there and experiment. You only know if you like something by trying it, by doing it. You can't just think about a style and say, you know what? I'm not into that. No, at this age, you want to be out there trying. So are you going to go streetwear? Are you going to go classic menswear? Guys, it's up to you, but go out there and try it and see what suits you. And with that, we've got our next tip. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes happen because you're going out there and you're trying something new. If you aren't making mistakes in your life, you're not trying enough things. You're not putting yourself out there. Mistakes happen whenever you're learning, whenever you're growing, whenever you're stretching yourself. Now let's talk about formulating your own opinion. This is hard, especially when you go against the flow. It's easy whenever you're with the crowd and you agree, but what about when you disagree? Are you going to have the courage to go your own way? Next up, you want to learn to leverage the power of color. Notice all of a sudden I brought in a pocket square right here. This little bit of color, this little bit of pop, I think really sets the outfit apart from the sea of suits out there that aren't using pocket squares. But red also has the power of actually making a man more believable. Other things, let's notice the green in the jacket I'm wearing. This is a very natural color. So when you see a man wearing green, all of a sudden you're more likely to trust him and colors can have this effect. Blue can also make you look more trustworthy. In addition, it can make an older man look younger. If you're already looking pretty young, then maybe you want to bring in charcoal gray. It's going to age you a bit. The power of black, that's going to be aggression. It's also going to slim you up. And when you understand the power of color, you can use it to your advantage. Now we're going to learn how to kiss and I'm not talking about with your lips. Keep it simple, silly. So we like to overcomplicate things. Guys, when it comes down to elegant, classic style, you don't need to bring in outlandish outfits, crazy colors, mind boggling patterns. No, it really is something focus in on the style pyramid, fit, function, and fabric. So that leads us right into our next point, fit. You want to make sure everything you put on your body fits your body. If it doesn't fit your body, you're not going to wear it. You need to know the name of your tailor. Understand how your dress shirt should fit. Understand how your jacket, your trousers, everything you wear should fit. Even your jeans, you want to take them to get adjusted if they don't fit you. Next up, we've got clothing function. Is the clothing sending the message you want to send? If you're an engineer working for a construction company, your outfits are going to be different than if you're a lawyer working for a construction company. The lawyer probably going to dress up a bit more, but still the engineer who's going out to the field, he's going to want to wear set clothing. If you're a consultant working for a New York firm, if you're a consultant working for a firm in a very small town, your, your outfits are going to be a bit different because in a bigger city, in an urban environment, suits are going to be the go-to. But still, if you're even in a small town, you may be doing consultations with a client in an urban environment via Skype or via Zoom. So you want to still wear the appropriate clothing. So when they see you, they, they get this feeling of trust and competence. And now let's talk about fabric, the third part of the style pyramid. You want to buy the best clothing that you can afford. So when you're just starting off, you just graduated college, you have a very limited budget. In that case, you're going to compromise. You're going to maybe buy a blend when it comes to a suit. You're going to buy shoes that are perhaps glued, going to be in the $50 to $100 range. But as you start to get your first, second, third paycheck, you start to put aside money because you realize I need to start investing in good pieces. And now gentlemen, you're going out there and buying your first pair of quality shoes. And I'm not talking Jordans, great shoes, but what I'm talking about here are dress shoes. These are going to be foundation shoes that basically when it comes to your business wardrobe, when it comes down to your business casual wardrobe, that you're going to be able to use these as the foundation. So two great options right here. You can go with a simple black Balmoral Oxford with a closed lacing system. This right here is a workhorse, especially if you're wearing dark colored suits often. But if you're in a more casual environment, environment. Maybe you want to look for a pair of bluchers. These are going to have an open lacing system. And if you don't know the difference, I'll bring up an infographic right here. But in general, the black Balmoral Oxfords are going to be a little bit dressier than these dark browns here in a more casual style. However, depends on really what your professional need is. What you're going to wear more often is probably the one you want to first buy because you're going to get the miles out of this. And when you dress sharp, you're going to feel like a million bucks. And now let's talk suits. So I think every man in his twenties should have at least one suit in his closet, in his wardrobe that 
first off, fits in well. So you want to take this to a tailor, get it adjusted to fit your body, make sure that the suit fits. Don't go for any of those crazy outlandish fits and that takes us to function. So you want this to be not a fashion suit, but a classically styled suit. One that you could spend a bit of money on and once it fits you, you're going to be able to use it for the next five years, maybe even beyond if you're able to, you know, get a classic style. And when we're talking classic styles, also let's talk about the color. So you want to go with navy blue charcoal gray and when it comes down to what you can afford spend a little bit more money here get something that every time you put it on that fabric drapes well and it makes you look like a million bucks so you've got the shoes, you've got the suit. Now let's talk about accessories. So I think at this point, it's good for a man to buy his first high quality accessory. And this is going to be something going to serve you for the next decade and perhaps beyond. So you buy your first really nice leather briefcase, or maybe you start to get into watches. Maybe it's a pair of sunglasses. When you put them on, you just feel great. The point of these last three is that you've got an outfit. When you put it together, you feel like a million bucks because when you're in your twenties, opportunity is going to be coming towards you and you want to be able to meet that opportunity dressed like the man you know yourself to be. Gents, own at least one book on men's style. I'm not even saying that you need to read this thing, but I want you to have this so that you can make your way through and find some amazing information. And it doesn't matter who you are, what your complexion is, what you are bringing to the table, what your profession is, find something that works for you and go out there. And yes, there are so many YouTube channels out there and I'll link to some of my favorites down in the description, such as Aaron over at Alpha M or Jose over at Teaching Men's Fashion or Raphael over at the Gentleman's Gazette. Guys, tons of options out there. Really, you need to find someone that you connect with and learn from others. And that leads me to my next tip, gentlemen, find your style inspiration. So many options out there. Just look to Hollywood. You've got Ryan Gosling. We've got George Clooney. You've got Idris Elba, Daniel Craig. But maybe you want someone who's more relatable. Look to Travis White over on Instagram. And gents, when you're looking for your style inspiration, find someone that you really connect with. So if you're looking for someone that's a bit younger, someone's got more of a bleeding edge style, check out Koi over at Gentleman Within. I love what this guy's doing. He's a good friend of mine, good channel. Or maybe you want something that's more age specific because you're in your 50s or your 40s and you're still watching this video. Guys, go check out John over at 40 Over Fashion. He's killing it and I love his videos and what he brings to the table. So these next few tips are more like warnings and things to avoid. First up, just because it's expensive, just because it costs a lot of money does not mean it's high quality. And related to that, just because it's got a fancy logo does not mean it makes you stylish. So next up, you want to understand the difference between fashion and classic style. So fashion is going to be more fleeting. It's going to be following trends. Nothing wrong with this. If this is really what you want to do, then go for it. But understand that this is going to be something you got to stay up on. Classic style, on the other hand, these are going to be silhouettes. These are going to be looks. These are going to be pieces of clothing that have stood the test of time. A good, well-fitted suit made in a classic style is going to serve you for a decade. Now, it's not going to win any awards for originality, but what it is going to win an award for is when it fits your body, when you wear it, you're going to get compliments. You're going to look like a million bucks and you don't have to worry about it going out of style. So now let's talk about habits. When you're in your 20s, you have a great opportunity to create habits that for the rest of your life, you're going to follow. Those are the strongest habits, the ones that you've done for years and it's hard to actually fall out of. So you want to make sure that you have good habits, not bad habits, which are going to lead you down the wrong path. So first up, let's talk about grooming habits. I do think you need to have a skincare routine. The skin is the largest organ on your body and you need to start protecting it now because this is something that you don't notice till it's too late. You want to make sure to wear a little bit of sunblock, especially if you're lighter colored in skin, in a sunny area, on your face, maybe even on your hands, other parts of your body you're exposing to. And I do think that having a good skincare routine early is going to basically pay dividends in the future. And with that, let's talk about your grooming routine. So for most guys, their grooming routine is reactive, not proactive. And what I mean by proactive is that you've got a set time every week in which you sit down and you take care of your toenails, of your fingernails. Every day you should actually be cleaning your nails. You never want to have dirty nails. When it comes to hair coming out of your nose, coming out of your ears, once a week you want to be trimming that, not just before you have a hot date and you're worried that she's going to basically see that forest coming out of your nose. 
Now let's talk about hair and the next tip here is to schedule in advance your time with your stylist or your barber. So the reason that you want to do this is you don't want to have to think about it. Again, you don't want to be reactive. You want to be proactive. You don't want to all of a sudden realize I've got that important interview. I've got hair all over my neck. It's been four or five weeks since I've gotten my hair cut and all of a sudden you can't get in. You go to some barber you've never actually met, you've never worked with and all of a sudden they give you a bad cut. Guys, avoid that by scheduling time with your barber. And guys, don't be afraid afraid at this point to have fun with your facial hair. Over the last decade, we've seen beards become much more popular. The advantage of this in the workplace is that beards are now much more accepted. So tons of options here. You don't have to worry about any negative repercussions, which you did about 20 years ago, and you can try tons of different options. The best thing is to let your hair grow for maybe two to three months, and then you can see, okay, what can I do with the way that my hair grows? Maybe it's going to be some, hey, you don't grow it very well. We'll have fun with stubble. Science is showing that stubble makes a man more attractive. But maybe you say, you know what? I can do something with this. I can go with a goatee. Guys, find what works for you, but have fun experiment. Now, that being said, some experiments are more permanent than others. Tattoos. Be careful with tattoos. In today's society, still, especially in many cultures outside the U.S., tattoos are not as accepted. In fact, there was a recent anonymous study given to employers asking them straight up, hey, are you going to be biased negatively towards someone who has visible tattoos on their body? And 77% of people still said yes. So if you're going to go with a tattoo, I would advise it being on a place that, hey, if you be covered up, be very careful with anything on the face, anything on the hands, that can be picked up, especially in other cultures cultures as something negative. So another tip for guys in their 20s, go shopping in a thriftware store. And it's not just about the money that you're going to save. It's about being able to break free of the fashion trends. You see, when you go to a box store, you go to a menswear store, no matter what store it is, they are selling clothing that was sent to them. They are stuck in the trends of the year of the time period. But when you go to a thrift store, to a consignment shop, all of a sudden you're going to see clothing that was in style, maybe 10, 20, sometimes 40 years ago, and here's the deal, is that you find something that you like the look of, you like the way that this thing just, but you're not going to find this anywhere else because this went out of fashion or trend maybe 40 years ago, 30 years ago, but yet you're able to bring it into your wardrobe and you find your own unique style. And now let's talk about the power of the interchangeable wardrobe. If you can master this in your 20s, you're going to save yourself a lot of frustration, a lot of time, a lot of money because you're going to be able to build a wardrobe which is made up of pieces that are going to work with each other. So you own less clothing, you get more outfits, and you save yourself the frustration of not being able to piece things together. You are able to look sharp without any effort. And guys, you want to learn how to do this? Check out this video right here, how to build your interchangeable wardrobe. One of my best videos. Go check it out, guys, and learn how to dress like the man you know yourself to be.